welcome to episode 186 of the Rustical Gaming Podcast. I'm your host and GM, Alex Newell. With me today, I have... Ben Meredith. Bryn Monroe. Lydia Nicholas. And Helen Gould. And who are you playing? Zolf Smith. Hamid Salah Haroon Al-Tahan. Sal Sidebottom. And Azu. You doing okay, Ben? Forget I your just, name for a second. You, you said, and we're playing with, I was like, wait, I do go first one. I don't want to, hey, wait, hang on. Ah, ah. <laughs> so, ah, where am I? Everything's just soft, yeah. spongy surfaces well, and I'm lost and confused. I didn't want to talk over every, anyone, but then I was like, wait, no, I am. I do go first. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you also tried to restart number expression discourse that i thought we were 75 episodes beyond but uh, <laughs> we're actually seven five episodes beyond it <laughs> <laughs> thank you ben right god no well played sir well played. well all i'll all i'll say is good confusion and fear will serve you well today um oh no trust them you know fear leads to anger anger leads to hate and hate leads to xp so <gasps> we are broadly speaking at the centre of the Garden of Yerlik. We may or may not have found some unnecessarily large plant-esque things in the middle. It's kind of hard to call. You may have had to pick your way through a vast array of some kind of petrifying vines or similar, as we've established. You're still technically in the vicinity of some weird interdimensional thing that has it in for you. And as far as I am aware, we left off with you having a nice vista, you know, and now it's time to consider, you know, do you want a picnic? Um, is it time to head back already? Do you have do you have a bit of time to mooch around? That kind of thing. Everyone everyone on board with me so far? Have I forgotten anything? That seems pretty accurate. I'd like a time check. Yep. Yes. I want oh, to Oh, I did no, I did forget. A horde of petrified dwarves, but you know, minor minor afterthoughts here, like barely worth mentioning yeah we came in at like dawn didn't we and yeah. then i think you said it was like early afternoon now do, do we still have time to get out of the forest before nightfall or at least close to doing so categorically yes you are past midday at this point yeah you are around the sort of 1 30 p.m mark etc thankfully with the trees being more spaced in the blight area you yeah. can be like okay sun good nice. uh, it's not like direct line of sight but you, you have a good sense you're not worried that you've been lost track of time or anything sure. like that and it is less than two hours since the uh, cell's still got big teeth and wings yes as far as i'm aware unless you did it earlier than i thought that was my other question is yeah how far past our big power up initial spell prep thing are we because a lot of our uh, effects last for 90 minutes and i feel like we're still less than an hour from that but i mm. it depends how i was far i was walked. playing around with about an hour so if you're at sure. 90 minutes you're still on the right side of stuff yeah, yeah if you have something that lasts an hour i'm gonna rule that it's expired okay i mean cells thing lasts two hours so the fact that it has been one hour rather than 90 minutes is important cool yeah that's fine at this stage, I can't progress much further than I gave you all effectively first impression of this situation. I kind of have to respond to you. I don't have further things to drop in your lap now. I need you to have a think, and then I, you can... you Basically, you can trigger all manner of horrible things, but I can't trigger it for you. First thing I do is turn towards Summit the Owl and see what their response to this is. Yeah. You are witnessing someone beholding a blasphemy so profound... It's half revulsion, like outraged revulsion, half fear that something that's meant to be untouchable has been so warped Mm. and it's writ large on her face. She's not saying or doing anything. She's just like... Stunned. Yeah. Well, um, that definitely seems to be the centre of it. Maybe we should circle round it and see what all three faces elements look like well uh, so McNeil is this meant to be here like was this here before or is this a new thing you'll all be noticing that Summit Neil's starting to cry <gasps> oh no as he puts well gently like sort of tries to pat their shoulder but we'll stop if if they it, don't want you, it you, you don't really get a response okay she'll stop <laughs> This is... Wrong. This is wrong. Can you, can you give us a little more, more detail about uh, the level of and the kind of, the kind of wrong? What, what sort of... What, what should be here? The, the, heart, the heart of the... 
Uh, she drops from her feet down. Oh. She just, literally, she just her legs go weak and she just drops. Summit Neil, if you can be clear, like what, what were you expecting? What is this? We, we don't know what to be expecting, so we don't we don't know what to if if, if we try and fix or or fight something. We want to make sure that we're we're attacking the right thing, you know. The garden is a. It's, it, it's not just a, a place of communion with those that have come before it is it, it is those that have come before to find this in the heart of the garden where where one would expect to find those that have come before waiting to offer guidance so these plants shouldn't be here at all there, there, there should just be some kind of some some kind of oracle she or, looks or, she or, looks or, around in all directions none of this none of this is right None of it at all. Okay, so we, we gotta get rid of the big bulb things and the stone dwarves and the the the, the plants that shoot stone dust stuff. All, all of that is wrong. None of none of that is is It's all wrong. Okay. All, wrong. all right. I think as Hamid said, we should have a look, get a better idea of what this is if we can work it out. I'm assuming None of us have any idea at all what this might be. I kind of look around, including like wild. Yeah, can we make any knowledge checks? For yeah, more I'm going to ask for basically a few now. Mm-hmm. So, I'm going to go through people one at a time because th- this interaction now with so many different elements that I can pass different pieces of information based on the knowledge checks quite interestingly. Mm-hmm. Cool. I'm going to start with you, Lydia, given that yep. you've got in out the wazoo. Yes. What knowledges do you have as trained? I'm only accepting trained submissions for this one. No blunt brute force knowledge checks. <laughs> the key ones that have ranks in. Yeah, only the ones that you have ranks in. Arcana, engineering, geography, history, nature, and nobility. Okay, Bryn, same question. Arcana. Okay. Skrark has dungeoneering and engineering. Okay. Zolf, same question. Arcana, history, nobility, planes, religion. And Helen. I only have nobility and religion. Okay, I am going to tell some of you which one you can roll, and others I'm going to let you choose amongst your options. Mm-hmm. Azu, yeah. you can roll nobility. Oh, really? Okay. Zolf, you can pick between arcana, planes, or nobility. Planes. Hamid obviously has to be arcana. Cell, interestingly enough, any of the ones that you picked are able to be used. Well, then I would go for Arcana, as that's the highest, but if other people are doing Arcana, would they get different things by rolling on a different stat? So what I would say is, if two of you want to use the same knowledge, one of you can assist the other for a higher total, but otherwise I would say use different. I'm not going to... Otherwise, you're, just du- you, you, you're kind of blowing your opportunity here by duplicating okay. uh, rolls. So Cell's got 17 in Arcana and 12 in Nature, which seem the most... Yeah, I've got 16 in Arcana, so I'm a tiny downgrade, but no one else has nature. Met- metagaming, you'll get more information from rolling a nature check than you will okay. from a minor tangential boost to cool. Arcana on this one. Yeah. Okay. okay, in which case then, everyone, please give me your rolls. I'm going to go with all of you one at a time. You're going to tell me the knowledge that you rolled and then your number, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Natural 20. I also got a natural 20. Oh, I got a 17, which is not a natural 20, but is high. I got a 15. That's really solid rolls from everybody. That's good. Well done, Dice. Or rather, right, Dice Alex, apps. time to explain the entire yes. campaign to us. Honestly, ready. you couldn't have picked a better time. Gosh. <laughs> that was a very good time to have the big rolls. I am going to start with Helen's knowledge and ability. Because I haven't had a chance to do knowledge and ability. I think since James left. Yeah, because every time I've rolled it before, I've been absolutely crap at it. Yeah. (laughs) You recognise a number of the petrified dwarves, both by insignia and some by face. I leave it to your good judgement as to how you would have known this, whether this is things that you would have been told by previous mentors, things you would have taken an interest in, but you actively know these are the case. There are multiple ways you could know these things. I'm going to tell you what the info is, but I'm, allow- I'm going to allow you to retcon how it is you know this information, okay? Yes. You recognise that the majority of the people who seem to be running around are Svalbardian nobles. Okay. Now, nobles doesn't mean in the aristocratic sense. 
by nobles, what we mean is that there's a... You know that there's a sort of system in Svalbard you've been made aware of, which is quite interesting, where it's it's a vote-based system. A lot of it is to who gets, you know, high-priority positions. But there are certain dynasties where, okay, this person is the son of this person and the daughter of this person who were both the best at this thing. They're more likely to be voted up into that position. There's this pseudo-nobility that kicks around a little bit insofar as they're more likely to be voted up, etc. You recognise large number of notable nobles, in inverted commas, of the Svalbardian people. You also recognise the current, as far as you are aware, dwarven leader of Svalbard. By face. Yes. The current leader, bear in mind that this is information that you had prior to the world going wrong, you know, your two-year gap, well, sorry, your extended gap, I should say, and yeah. also on the understanding that you haven't had chance for any updates in this, I'm going to say, like, so your info might be a little bit old, but you know that that's Jofa Jonsson. You know that Jonsson is effectively a surname title. Whoever is the leader is Jonsson, which loosely translates from Dwarvish as, like, son is son of. Like, the okay. iron son of the ore, it almost translates of. It basically means, like, instead of being patronymic where it's like, you know, son of this person, it means son of, like, the ore, like, the, the rock itself. Son of the concept of iron. Yeah, that's the best <laughs> way to translate it. <laughs> son of F-E. All right. <laughs> so, Yofa seems to be one of the ones who is basically holding ground against a retreat, Looking around, you realise that, assuming that all of these sort of dwarves are, you know, people who found themselves here or are fleeing something, whatever happened must have happened pretty much in the centre of Svalbard. You would not get all of these people. In fact, looking Mm -hmm. around, you start to realise, this is a Svalbardian ruling council. (gasps) These are the key decision makers, as you are aware of it, from Svalbard. Almost all of them. There might be one or two that are missing, but for the most part, this is... If you want to consider this as the sort of head of the Svalbardian city, let's call it, mm-hmm. th- this is, if you, were, if you wanted to cut off the head, as it were, this would be a good way to start, you know what I mean? Oh, dear. The other thing that you are aware of is, although, you know, I mentioned that a lot of them are wearing sort of like indoor garb, like those furs and so on, you're starting to recognise it given a bit of time. A lot of these are council garb. This is This, this might have been literally people in council when something happened you know that the Svalbardian city prides itself on effectively its security the whole point of Svalbard is it is the safe place like that's sort of its thing it is the safe place the rock the hard place if everything else is going Mm. to heck you like Svalbard will stand it's their thing it's how they roll so the idea that this is in the centre is kind of big base treachery however i would love to know helen how do you know this knowledge nobility i know this because the first paladin of aphrodite that azu ever met is a dwarf called zugi brightheart yes who i'm going to say now because i never specified this in the backstory was from svalbard Helen, um, let me just say, what an excellent leap of logic that I couldn't possibly have led you to, but I couldn't be happier about. <laughs> it's almost as if someone had been planning this. <laughs> Very happy. What can I possibly say? I didn't connect these dots. Helen just saw two dots and decided to draw a line. It's not my fault that, that it completes a rather large <laughs> elaborate picture. <laughs> yes. I will say that Azu knows this amount of detail, not just because uh, Zugi told her so, but because Zugi was later lost at sea and Azu did indeed go down a research hole and had at the back of her mind some plans to go to Svalbard one day and sort of see if she can find Zugi's family, etc. Oh, Helen, you can remain my favourite. Thank you. <laughs> Although I shouldn't be thanking you because that usually leads to really bad things for me. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be my favourite. It's like, it's like golf, no. you're not aiming for a high score. You don't want to be my favourite. <laughs> okay, I'm going to jump across then to uh, Benjamin Zolf Meredith. What was your knowledge and what did you get? It was planes and I got a 22. Okay, so you are not familiar with these specific things, whatever they are, but you know, I've said this before, you know what to expect when planes are going a bit weird. And when you were entering the Garden of Yerlik, I said that there are areas where those planes 
become condensed, then you can get some bleed across. Yeah. Whatever's happening here, this isn't a bleed. This is a full-blown intrusion. This is something yep. that is poking its way in, and by virtue of poking its way in, is dragging all these other problems with it. To your eye, it looks more like these big, huge things, whatever they are, are imposing upon this plane as opposed to being native to it. And probably the other things that are not to be expected in the Garden of Yerlik are symptomatic of them, rather than being separate things. They, they're sort of the the wake of a big ship passing through a channel, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And ethereal still, or, or possibly other? Like this, You know that these aren't of... These big, huge things aren't of the ethereal plane. Okay. Is Zolf drawing any connections between the cult of Hades, the fact that the Garden of Yerlik isn't just a... You know, is like a repository, potentially, of souls or spirits, and the fact this campaign is called Erasing the Line, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> you are connecting some dots, but not in the way that I think you're leading to. Okay, fine. These plants are not a thing you would expect to interact with afterlives. There are certain planes that have sort of, you know, like celestial okay. bents and things like that. What you're seeing here, you, you would not expect to connect with afterlives with sort of the religious, spiritual, celestial planes. Okay. This, these are more things of outer planes, the weird spaces, the bits between areas, things like sure. that. However, the Garden of Yerlik, you definitely were earlier going, okay, this is interacting with some celestial planes and stuff like that. This is something that is not of the afterlife thinking sure. that's been plopped in the middle of it, as far as you can so tell. So this is potentially like people doing things with afterlives, but they've used this as a potentially a weapon or something. Like, I don't know what actually happened, but that could be a reasonable assumption. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It could be a deliberate weapon. It could be a planar hack that went wrong. There's so many yeah. ways that planes can go wrong. But suffice it to say, some bright spark somewhere has managed to make just the worst kind of situation where they've gone, right, why don't we get the material plane, afterlives, compress them down, and then bring in a bunch of other random catalyzing elements. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a mess. Plainly speaking, it's a mess, and it's a bad mess. Things should not ever be like this, and you know that this is a situation that will continue to worsen. I'm assuming that I haven't got a bloody clue how to solve it. In terms of the planar stuff... It depends. If there is a sentient thing at bay, generally speaking, banishment's always a great start. Banishing something to the <laughs> plane from whence it came, it's always a good start. You know that if you can remove the causes of planar disturbances, they have a tendency to heal and right themselves given enough time. Okay. But that's as far as you know. Cool. That's great. Thank you. Bryn. So I rolled Knowledge Arcana, and I rolled a natural 20 for a total of 36. Okay. Ooh. There's definitely wild magic elements at play. This is not intentional magic. The context that it's happening within, the nature of the complications and so on, there doesn't appear to be intentionality attached to the magics at play here. There's no way that what could have been happening would be happening in an area that did not have large amounts of wild magic, which says to you that as an art like as an expert in Arcana, yes, this might have like I know that Ben was sort of proposing that maybe it has connections to other places in the, the world and so on. Certainly, to sustain this as a, as a static thing requires large amounts of wild magic. It should not be able to sustain itself in this manner without consuming wild magic. So you would expect, therefore, that either this is propping up whatever this is connecting to elsewhere that does not have wild magic, because you're in a very wild magic-rich mm. area, or that it is connected in some way to other areas of wild magic. Long story short... If Zolf was coming to the conclusion that if you can remove the source, things will naturalize, your instinct is, think of it like a fire. If you manage to cut off the oxygen, the fire will go out on its own. There's a lot of wild magic at play here. Yeah. You have seen like papers on this and so on as well in your formal studies, never mind from what you've seen in the world. Yeah. Things exposed to wild magic tend to go a few ways. One, bonkers, weird, wrong, bizarre, like the ship did. Yeah. Two, they tend to scale up. Sure. Three, they tend to have increasingly important sort of secondary symptomatic effects. So Rome was a lot like that. You cast a magic spell in Rome, there's sort of wild magic at play. Things are maximised or minimised or they go awry, things like that. Those are realistically the three options for wild magic. You're looking at these enormous plants going, OK, this, this stuff is feeding off wild magic. What it is feeding off it for, difficult to tell. Your guess would be definitely interacting with the planes potentially planar travel something akin to what you saw in the broken gate spell in rome yes similar to that it's 
you are aware that you... Because remember, I helped the Eldarians study that as exactly. well. Exactly. There are two ways that you can connect distant locations. Teleporting, which is where you move. Yeah. And planar is where you can basically make two places appear in the same place at the same time. You aren't moving. You are forcing the world to yeah. link. You, you create an Einstein Rosen bridge. Basically, that's what I'm riffing off, yeah. yeah. To your eye, this could be... It might have been assisted by external forces, but this could be a very odd confluence of events leading to a naturally occurring gateway of such. Yeah. But you're not aware of plants and such being a necessary part of that. That's odd. Yeah. Your experience yeah. of that is this is what happens when you assemble an entire cabal of wizards who are all experts with a single purpose or, yeah. you know, an enormous research institute pouring years of their work into it, not yeah. special plant. You know what I mean? That's odd. That's unusual. Yeah. So previously we talked about the difference between the Aurora and the effects in Rome mm -hmm. and the difference between that being, you know, that one being wild magic and one being a term we called corrupted magic. Uh -huh. Are you now saying that Rome's corrupted magic is a sort of different form of wild magic? So what I, I'm sort of thinking about this as wild magic to me is a bit like background radiation and areas of, you know, very high but essentially natural background Think of radiation. it as different types of radiation yeah. then. To go into my D&D law, because obviously I needed to kind of know this stuff, in this universe, as is the case with like D&D &D and Pathfinder and so on, they all kind of come from the same idea of you can either take energy from other planes or something called yeah. the weave, which is, I'm going to over like oversimplify, it's basically the force but magic, you know, the energy that combines <laughs> yeah. and blah, 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 blah. Wild magic is a situation where someone's getting the weave and they're shaking it, so you get unusual shapes, you get unusual situations, and you can... Well, it doesn't have to be a person. It's The weave can just be vibrating exactly. because of natural effects. But yeah. if you know what you're doing, you can choose to be at the peak of a weave or the trough of a weave. Corrupted yeah. is where the weave has gone wrong. It has dropped a stitch, things like that, and you have odd holes poking through and things like that. Yeah, It's all technically pertaining to the weave, whether it is sort of celestial or not, but... It's very different. And both will create very strange magical energies in that area, but but it's a spectrum, types. and you are now at yeah. one opposite end of the spectrum, where Rome is at the other opposite end. But as with most of these things, they can yeah. both, to the uninitiated, look like magic's weird. Horseshoe theory. Basically that. <laughs> yeah. So this this thing is feeding off the very high natural background magical energy. In that would this be area a very sensible assumption. Yeah. Lydia. Yep. Now that you've got a bit of time to look around. You think you recognise the big bulbs. Oh dear. They look like a grossly, grossly oversized version of a plant that you have seen native to the Americas. Mm -hmm. It is a plant that you have seen have some ritual usage mm -hmm. in elven societies, mm -hmm. specifically to do with magical communication unlimited to just people on this plane right okay i don't mean as a component i don't mean you just grind it up and you use it i mean like there are rituals that you are aware of tied to these large plants mm -hmm. which if used correctly people have used to both commune with the dead and commune with the living right so it's pretty advanced stuff what it is is astonishingly rare mm -hmm. you have run into this once you heard a lot of stories right. of a story of a story of a story Natural curiosity may have driven you to sort of like seek it out if you were nearby at some point. It's up to you. But all, yeah. all, all I would say is, is exceedingly rare. If you ignore the scale, the idea of three of them being in the same place is ludicrous. Right. Th these are incredibly coveted plants that are incredibly difficult to cultivate if you're trying to do so deliberately. They require incredibly specific situations and it is considered... You know how there are certain crafts that have like a masterwork you know what I mean? Where it's mm -hmm. like crafting a brand new spell, it can be considered like a master work. To be able mm -hmm. to cultivate one of these plants would be considered either druidic or a uh, herbologic master work. Right, right. Also, you are noticing there is small amounts of flora near them, which seems to have a North American origin, which is a lot less rare. Right, right. I mentioned before that at the distance you thought you could see like a, a, a large cat petrified or something similar. I said it a little while ago. You see a decent amount of North American flora with maybe a couple of small fauna, petrified of course, mm -hmm. near, and this is the last piece of info I'm going to give you, a specific one of the bulb. I said that there were three of these large bulbs. 
a nearest one, yep. one that's sort of partially obscured, and then one that's sort of heavily obscured by the other two. The middle bulb seems to be the one that has more sort of North American flora taking root. Mm-hmm. The nearest bulb is the one that seems to be quite heavy in silver dwarven statues, let's say. The furthest bulb is one that doesn't necessarily have much identifying features beyond what I've already described. Yeah, it's the boring one. It's the middle sibling. What I would say <laughs> is I realise that I've reached half of an episode and all I've done is give lore and I'm feeling itchy, I'm feeling uncomfortable, I'm feeling very seen, so I could oh do no, it a break. things might start to make sense. Exactly. So I'm going <laughs> to take a break, that. I'm going to re-establish some arbitrary mystery and then we can be back in a couple of minutes, okay? And welcome back. Ooh, ah, mystery, yes. I haven't just accidentally realised that I've opened a knowledge door yeah. that could just reveal the entire campaign. A- Alex Ooh, has realised ah. that you can't run a five-year successful RPG podcast without submitting to the mortifying ordeal of being known. <laughs> <laughs> it is odd. It is odd. So what I'm going to say coming back from the break is you are not under sufficient time pressure that you can't have quickly shared this information with one another and said, oh, I recognise that, blah, 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 blah. That's definitely what we spent the break doing, was sharing all our knowledge dumps in character, so we all characters share the same base level of knowledge. There is one extra piece of knowledge which Summit Njerl can bring to bear, Mm -hmm. which is, I'm not going to RP it, the seed that you are carrying, as far as Summit Njerl is aware, is related think sort of like Kingdom Phyla, etc., yeah. to both the trees of the Garden of Yerlik and those large bulbs. Okay. Right, so they're, they're all, say, in the same kind of family, but in, in the yeah. same way that you, you do not want to put some of the relatives of aloe vera on your skin, but some of them mm-hmm. have other medical effects. Thank you for a very good analogy that I was struggling to get to. Basically, that's yeah. exactly what I'm going for. Oh, or it's like bananas, where there's only one kind of banana we can eat, and a wild banana is actually really terrifying and full of seeds. So, so wait, so that, does that mean the seed wouldn't grow one of these weird bulb things, but at a normal size? Or it would? I'm still it, confused. It, it might grow a different variety. Like, there, yeah. are, there are lots of different aloes. Like onions and shallots. Or... Yeah, yeah. The onions, shallots, elephant, garlic, leek, they're all presumably mm. the same. Can I ask for a sense motive from everyone, please? Ooh. Yeah. That's a 22 from me. Oh, Azu, you're so helpful in me basically doing, you know, tell, don't show. Thank you. <laughs> uh, that's a 15 from Cell, which is actually I'm that's impressed okay. by because they've got naught wisdom. <laughs> Eight from Hamid. He's too consumed with all the new ideas. 25. Oh, so both Zolf and Azu. Summit Newell isn't lying. You are watching someone completely reevaluate every single thing they know. Oh. It isn't that Summit Newell is lying, it's that Summit Newell is going... Well, I thought it was this, but every like, there's a big, glaring testament to my ignorance staring me in the face. Summit Neil's confidence is clearly like collapsing like a sandcastle in the oh. sea. Not to the point where she's going to be necessarily a liability, but you can see that she is. There is a hesitance in every answer that was not there before. Oh. So, 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 you think these are three separate plants, not like one plant with three? shoots presumably itself will know I mean I can run roll another knowledge nature but from what I'd heard I'd presume they're three separate ones so Cell would say that well there's an interesting weird little glitch when it comes to these plants Mm -hmm. which is people have theorised that though they are clearly on the material plane separate plants like you Mm -hmm. can have plant one over here and plant one over there Mm -hmm. people have theorised that they may share a root structure no matter where the other plants are provided but No one has an, a definitive answer to that, yes or no. It's very kind of wishy-washy. But you know that, physically speaking, here is a plant, here is a plant. You know this. But you also know that the experts of these plants are the right, you know, the, the masters who have a tendency to cultivate them kind of share a pet theory that all of the plants are the same mm. in some way and that if you care well for one, someone else's plant will do well, etc. But it's very unsubstantiated. S- Cell explains speaking. that almost exactly as ramblingly as that was <laughs> you're and welcome also draws on examples of like mycelium sprouting up mushrooms in different places between us yeah i'm basically talking spiritual mycelia is yeah! kind of what i'm getting out there woo, woo. so there's your info thoughts feelings Ooh. pet theories well yeah one thing i was wondering about is whether or not like 
if our seed hadn't been in the plane of Hades when this happened, the same thing would have happened to the party. And whether, like, these are <gasps> seeds... Oh, my God. ...that are around the world. Oh. What a horrible way that the campaign would have ended. Just all of a sudden, Alex goes, you're all turned to stone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, th- I think... No, I don't think the... Tur- I don't know if the turning to stone was the... S- I think that was then they got attacked by the stone turned to stone plants and were massively underprepared, so we'd have had, like, a you know, big fight or something. But mm. We got loads of hit points. They, they weren't player characters <laughs> and therefore they died. Oh dear. <laughs> I might slightly codify that in universe as not saying the words player characters, but sure. All right. Uh, <laughs> have the will of the fates, however the hell you want to justify <laughs> We, we <laughs> are very skilled people. We have spent a lifetime cultivating certain skills. And got lots of numbers written on my soul. We will hunt <laughs> and find XP. But yeah, like whether whether there's a seed like in pride of place in like the Svalbard Council Chamber because it's super rare, and then maybe there was one in America somewhere, and then we've got obviously this third really part that we have no idea. But maybe it was maybe like I don't know Tesla ran to America. Maybe it's Tesla's seed. At the risk of oversharing, mm. I'm happy for people to propose pet theories and for me to say if there's any information over the last five years mm. that you would probably remember as a character that would disprove your pet theory, okay? Mm-mm. I'll keep it big and broad. Yeah. There is currently nothing in your knowledge base that would say that what you have just proposed is impossible or incorrect. Would any... In Cell's knowledge base, you said that Cell thinks they're related, but would Cell think that in normal circumstances the seed would not grow into oh no it's summit neil who thinks who knows they're related wait correct confused summit neil has shared that information with you also and summit neil is not confident of anything anymore so it would not but but cell also knows what these plants should look like so what you know is that these plants aren't behaving the way that they should as far as you're aware so asking would this have happened is kind of awkward because you're asking in this unprecedented thing what's the precedent Mm. okay Okay. I mean, they're definitely feeding off the wild magic, so everything's a bit unpredictable. Let, let, let's get a better look at these other two bulbs. Wild speaks up, Ooh. Hamid, while well, Cell as well, I suppose. Are you either of you aware of a way to, at scale, block wild magic? Do I roll for that? That'd be an arcana roll. Okay. I would say, I'm just going to give you this one for free because it's already come up previously on the ship and so on short of building the equivalent of a massive Faraday cage over them mm. it, it's it's not really a thing unless there's one other option which you would just both know without thingy anti-magic stuff exists yeah. mm. if you could get a massive great anti-magic boulder like what was in the cell of the Japanese tavern if you remember that was a tiny little chip of a thing if you could get a heffing great boulder you're not aware that there's anything like that that exists, but something like that would have a similar effect. Cell excitedly proposes building a giant magical Faraday cage. <laughs> I mean, a simple anti-magic field would work, but generating it one at this size, and if you wanted to sustain it, that... The, That's a massive undertaking. I don't know of anyone who's ever achieved anything of that scale in that I'm not area. aware of anyone having achieved anything close. I mean, Cell's right. Uh, uh, you know, the, a cage similar to what we built on the ship, but with a bit more time and a bit more resources, I guess, when we, we worked just out burn the principles it down? behind Could that. we just burn all of it down? Yeah, I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite in favour of the burning, so long as that burning then doesn't go through... I mean, the, so that middle one i I can see that's that's an american cat and unless you guys let's go and take a closer look at it yeah also um remember this is you know this is like a planar intrusion effectively if we burn off anything that's here more stuff might just come through you know there's not necessarily all of you please give me a perception roll okay Uh, 12 I secretly kind of want all of you to fail this one, so that you, you, I'm, I'm still on board with you, Ben. Well, screw you, 26. 33. Sorry, Alex. Mm. <laughs> 16 for Hamid, 18 for Skrark. Those were both bad rolls. <laughs> so, Cell and Azu. Ooh. Alex goes to his GM mind palace to remember character backstories. Oh, dear. Mm. Azu and Cell. While other people are talking and, you know, chucking out pet theories and so on and blah, 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 you hear the tolling of a distant bell. Oh. It seems to be playing a short tune. 
Sal immediately mentions this because they are concerned, of course, that there are hallucinations or things coming from the dead or whatever, but... yeah. Oh, yeah, Tolling also... Bells has loads of... Yeah, yeah. Uh, sig- <laughs> Alex, for whom does the bell toll? Uh, as you and sell, that's been established. <laughs> Goodness me! Goodness me, Bryn! What a good question! Gosh, you're also my favourite! You're all playing so well! Good! The the bell tolls eight times, then stops. Um, do the rest of you hear that? Do you think it's a clock? No, it, it's announcing how many deaths there are about to be. And no, there's that's four all player us. characters and three NPCs here. So there's one person we haven't noticed. Uh, it's so, no, Sora. It's just, just oh, it could be Sora, one, yeah. You know. Look, can we please start looking at the other bulbs? I've been wanting to do no, this since I'm the gonna, first minute I'm of the keep episode. I'm going to throwing arbitrary and you're lore. About, you're about we to can... cut to the next ep before I've had a chance to look at the other bulbs. <laughs> I think we can walk while we talk. Yes. Um, yeah. I'm absolutely fine to have said that. It will have been slow going because Summit Newell, admittedly, shakily, is still guiding you around. There's a vine that will petrify you. There's a vine that will petrify you. That one's moving. We'll have to go this way. So it's very slow going. Also, okay. apart, I don't know if anyone else, but I'm kind of afraid of getting too close to the bulbs right now. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm assuming that you're giving them yeah. a wide berth. I'm Extremely immortal. Extremely wide. There is something odd to the third most distant bulb. Is that the one that the bong, 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 bong <laughs> came from? Yes. Right, OK. I'm going to have to start using different terms than nearest and furthest because as you cir- circle, the, the things change. Yeah. Dwarf bulb, America bulb, and bong bulb. So, <laughs> bong bulb, right. <laughs> so the bong bulb... The bong 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 bong. The bong 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 bong. That one has less flora around it than the basic background of the blight. So you know how the bulbs have like certain flourishes of of whatever. That bulb not only doesn't have any special flourishes, it actually has less than what is kicking around in terms of like leaf detritus and so on it's more it's more like someone has gone and you know raked up the leaves and cleared it out Hmm. when you say that do you mean that it looks more manicured or more barren yeah that's a good question closer to barren but it's actually surprisingly hard to tell because it's there's you're looking at actually like some bare dirt no no sure (laughs) with the raking thing it's like is it i kill things near me or someone's looked after it no to be clear there aren't clear signs of cultivation but it wouldn't be impossible that someone had deliberately salted the ground around it or something like that. That's as much as I can give you. Right. But also trees do a thing where like, directly around them is often like a big bear patch because they suck all the nutrients down. Cell, do you still have advanced scent? If Cell still has wings and teeth, Cell has a sniffy nose. So I'm going to say that in order to get all of this talking and so on, obviously we're mm-hmm. going to be burning through some time. You're drawing near the end of that, however... So we've been there please... an hour, because... So, oh no, sorry, you'll have half an hour left. Okay, cool, yep. I'm saying it's taken about half an hour to chat, yep. discuss, have a think, blah, 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 and to circumnavigate. Yep. Cell, can you specifically give me a perception check? Ooh, it's a sniffy nose perception. What oh. does my nose sniff? Uh, only rolled a nine, so that is only a 23. Soot, smoke. Must be London. Yeah. Uh, well, so Cell has not been, so uh, Cell would not know... Uh, this one, this one smells of uh, fire and kind of toxins, maybe, and s- smoke. Hmm. Like the like the inside of a house that's poorly ventilated, and you're you're kind of doing metal work. Well, that explains the barrenness, or some sort of built-up city. So it looks like the first one, you know, all these dwarves came out of it in some way, and yeah, the second Svalbard. one, it, it looks Svalbard, like definitely. the flora and the fauna of America have come out. And, the last one, pollution has come out. Uh, pollution and bells. Well, then it's pollution land. Like, well, that's I, I don't that, know. if that explains why some of the, the the plants has died off there. If it's been sort of leaking out pollution. I mean, is there? What can we do with this information? Can we go to these places? Can we check? Maybe they do. Well, they definitely got here. I'm not sure that would be a good idea. What do these bulbs actually look like, Alex? Like, are they closed up? Are they open? Is there a big purple portal? They are closed. They are all large, closed bulbs that look like they could flower. If they flowered, 
they would expand out over a very significant area. And when you say bulbs, you mean like the closed bulb of a flower head, not a root bulb? Yes. Okay. Oh, I was imagining root bulbs the whole time. That's my yeah. bad. I was thinking like a rose kind of... Is... A flower bud. And a furrow. Yeah, a bud, yeah. not a bulb. Oh, it's a bud, not a bulb. Yeah, basically. Bul- yeah, okay, I think I might have been misspeaking then. Think of it more as a larger bud. What I would say is it has a large root network akin to a bulb as well. These aren't real plants. Yeah, sure, sure, Sorry. Sure. Spoilers. Uh, <laughs> what? But as a result, it looks like it could flower. If it flowered, it would cover a huge area. However, the petals themselves are vast, like building sized, yeah. to the point where even closed, you can see that they're not sealed. They're not airtight. If This isn't a hanger door, if you know what I mean. They are closed upon themselves, but they are not like smooth and sealed stone mm. and you can see that their root structure as I said last time sort of extend out outwards from them right well I guess I'll go have a look then well you're not going alone alright well any of us but we need to do something so let's, let's do something let's see if we can just burn them you know maybe just I just I, I can electrify them if you want but I'd really I mean I don't. A I don't think we have enough fire to get this because it's also living matter and B I don't think we should just burn something down that's potentially connected to other places. I might have enough fire, but <laughs> what I would be more worried about is if they're feeding off wild magic. It may be that magic will power them, and, you know, some uh, plants respond quite well. Now, mm. if we had natural fire, which also have, but not very much of, then that, I'd be more willing to try that, but I don't really want to try magical fire in case it... Right, so I'm going to go and check the bulbs then. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm coming with you. Good, all right. We're going to go check the bulbs. I mean, yeah. I'll walk towards the the poison bulb, smoke bulb. Can I ask, Alex, if the trees are not covering this area, for instance, could Cell fly up above and look down on the bulbs? Cell does that. Okay. I'll actually deal with Cell first because it'll be quicker if that's okay. Yep, Ooh. sure. <laughs> cell dies. Yeah. <laughs> Flying up, mm-hmm. a couple of things start happening in rapid succession. Mm-hmm. So first things first is that your visibility starts to reduce more than you would have expected. Just slightly gets a little bit heat hazy. And then you have a hard, nostalgic burst of ascent from your past. Mm-hmm. Oh, Christ, yes. Yeah, somebody else said we shouldn't fly. It is, it's potent, mm-hmm. and it sort of leaves you off kilter a bit. Can you give me a reflex save, please? Yep, sure. I forgot about that. I'd forgotten about that. I forgot about that too. There's so many else out for the count, so... Okay, 25. 25. You manage to right yourself without, mm-hmm. like, dropping out of the sky and so on. The second that you aren't accelerating upwards, things start to stabilise a little bit. Yeah, at the, at the risk of metagame overshare... You, you move too quickly. You you could probably still fly up. The issue isn't the upness. It's that you just kind of went, off I go. Whoop, whoa, dizzy, head spin, blood mm. rush, etc. Um, but in this kind of spiritual variety. Being thus able to write themselves and stay as near to still as a non-hummingbird, <laughs> bat-winged, fanged thingamabob, is there any new perspective gained from like is there you, a big you made it all of middle? 20 feet up and then started to go whoa because you okay. just you kind of leapt upwards if you want to go up if you want to carry on going up that's fine i'll ask for a basic fly check yeah um, but I'll you can do that, do that. Absolutely okay give me a fly that. check a fly check ba, ba, ba. 30 yeah you're fine you, you you manage to take a more measured pace and be a bit more careful about it and go up the tops of the buds are, are closed in such a way that you can't see deep with inside them or anything like that mm-hmm. however You can see that... I've been saying that you're sort of in an open area, give or take. Mm. To your eye from this vantage point, it looks like this area more or less corresponds with... Yeah, if this bud was to open, it would reach from there to there. There's no tree cover between these points. If that one was to open, it would go there to there, that to there. there. It looks to you like this clearing Mm -hmm. pretty much directly correlates to what these would look like opened. Mm -hmm. If they opened, would there be any overlap? No. Good question, though. I'm now going to go to Zolf and Azu. So you you are approaching the bong 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 bull. Yes. Yes. Could you all please give me a will save? Oh dear. Is it against the evil? No, interestingly enough. Is it a fear or emotion based effect? Also, technically no. 21. 29. So, with that, you both feel effects, but you are not incapacitated in any way. As you start approaching the bulb, at first it's fine. 
then you start feeling a, a, a pressure upon you. The best way I can describe it is, it is not the sound of being in a large crowd, but that, that feeling of it, being, of it sort of pressing in on you, that, that, that the psychological weight of being in an over-dense crowd is what starts to weigh upon you. It's not that you can hear people, it's not that you feel pressed in, but that kind of breathless, too much, too many, too many, too many people, too many people, like this is a dangerous amount of people, I don't enjoy this, really starts to press in as you start getting closer to the bulb. However, it does not have any material mechanical effects, but you suspect that if someone was caught unaware with this, it might have some kind of effects. Right. Azu is going to put her hand on Sol's shoulder and be like, just to be like, uh, I feel like we could easily be swept away in some way, so I'm just going to hold on to you. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Are you going right up to the side of the plant? Yeah, I want to actually get some information. That's fine. You are able to approach the remaining distance up towards the uh, plant proper without it. It it slightly increases, but not in the way that it's suddenly going to overwhelm you. You seem to have a handle on things. All right. Approaching it, I'm going to describe it as a frond. It's technically it's a petal, but petal implies something small. This is like thick, you know, beefy thick, thick petal. From your scale, you would have to do a sort of pull-up climb, which you can do without checks and so on, to get over effectively the plant bed, you know, the sort of the grounding for the petals. Mm -hmm. You can see that there is a clear opening that you have approached where you could not sidestep because it is a bit bigger than that, but you can effectively head in the parting between those petals should you choose. Do we go in? I want to at least have a look. Give me a perception check, please. Both of us? Yes, only you two. 16. 21. You can both smell now the the soot and smoke, which seems a little bit more potent on the air. Azu, you also think you smell something maybe slightly rotten, maybe sewage, something like that. But there's just a there's a there's a slight tang to it on top of that smoke. The smoke's kind of powering out, but now you're close. You're like there's something else there, but you can't quite place it. Be- because it's the question we're all asking, and I lived there. Zolf lived there. Does it smell like London? I mean, to Zolf, it smells like London on a bad day. Okay, fine. Is it from the body of the simulacrum that we that we <laughs> discovered in the sewer that Zolf went in? Is it the exact same smell of the sewer Zolf was in that time? I will be very unhappy if we step through straight into a tide of poo. To revert to what I said previously, there is no information <laughs> that has been given to you during this campaign that would preclude that statement being true. God. Uh, yeah, I uh, get up, poke head in. Okay, so I've been hanging back with the other NPCs nearish the edge of the clearing, and in the meantime, I want to have recast heroism on Scrap because it will have run out. But That's if fine. I see them actually begin to put something in, I'm going to shout from the edge of the clearing. Maybe, maybe don't do that. Okay, cool, excellent. Give me a second to make a few rolls. Oh. Uh... Cell and but basically all the characters that aren't Azu and Zolf. Could I please get a perception check? Yep. Thirty-three for Hamid, fifteen for Skrark. Sixteen. After you yell the equivalent of "Hang on a second," you realise that you've just yelled "Hang on a second." Mm. You then hear, and you're facing towards them, behind you, Uh-oh. the distinct sound of branches moving. Something moving between the trees that are a bit back towards the edge of the clearing. Hamid is always so consistently helpful in high pressure situations. <laughs> I just work with what I'm given, okay? Self's concentrating on flying. This is cool. Everyone else, you're not you're not aware of this. Hamid, you do have a that was quite loud. <laughs> That's exactly what heads through your mind at that moment. Carry on. Uh Zolf and Azu, you do hear that call easily. I turn round and look into the the forest. So, yeah, you do see movement amongst the nearest trees at the far edge of the clearing. There's, there's nothing moving the tree. Urgh. It's the tree. It's the tree. The tree. The tree's moving. The tree's... The biggest tree's moving. The, big, the, big, the biggest tree is starting to glow bright blue from the inside and is starting to move. There's another tree. There's... Okay, there's two big... Tre- three, four, four of the trees are... The trees are coming! The trees are coming for you. Burnham this is what Duff you realise. Burnham would come to name. You've angered the Ents, you fool! Oh, no. It never ends well! 
And that's your closer as all of the trees start coming for Hamid. Ents love hobbits. It's a well-established fact. You are Saruman in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> you opened with burn down the forest. Yeah. <laughs> I specifically said I wasn't going to burn down the forest. No, you said you were worried it was going to get too bad, not that you didn't want to. <laughs> Well, either way, we can we can wrap up here. We get the pleasure of immediately jumping onto the next episode to find out what the heck's going on. And to all of the listeners out there, ha 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 ha, you have to wait. I've got to look at a big flower. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 Rusty Quill Gaming is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non Commercial Share Alike 4.0 International License. Today's episode was directed by Alexander J. Newell and produced by Hannah Preisinger. To subscribe, buy merchandise, or join our Patreon, visit rustyquill.com. Rate and review us online, tweet us at the Rusty Quill, visit us on Facebook, or email us via mail at rustyquill.com. Join our community on the Discord or via Reddit at r slash rustyquill. Thanks for listening. As I did that, I went, I'd already prepped this. He's working out when bells were invented. (laughs) It's that kind of a thing, basically. I don't know how else to put it. Oh, are we going to get Big Ben? Oh. Okay. And is it going to be like, when when did the tune go into Victoria Tower? Well, we can play with the timeline. It can be earlier (laughs) in this world. Where for a bell? Before 1732, all bells were the size of my thumb until (laughs) one man, Sir Arthur Bell, went, what if we made a big one? And so bells were born. Give me one second, (laughs) please. I mean, there's also the question of are the Big Ben chimes, uh, you know, publicly available sound clips? Have you considered I feel like that, they Alex? must be. Are I'm sure usable? that a single bong you could get, and then <laughs> no, then that can't be copyright. Like you, no, they someone... can't copyright Bing Bong, Bing Bong, Bing Bong, Bing Bong. I mean, bloody well. <laughs> I mean, I also love that it's just become canon that it's Big Ben. Yeah. I've not even said that. You just <laughs> this is off look, we go. you're not providing us answers to these theories, so we, like the audience you were afraid of, are diving down rabbit holes. <laughs>